G'day, mate, it's a doctor here, and happy Halloween! And in honor of this special occasion, I have a Halloween themed deck profile for you guys. This is called Trickstar or Treat. I was gonna call it a uh, trick or treat, but that seems to apply to uh, ghost tricks, which, uh, yeah, fair enough. But recently I made a video on the untapped potential of iron chains, and, well, let's just say I didn't do a deck profile on them for, um,. A few reasons, but I think we have a cohesive strategy with this one, and you could play this in Mystic Mind format. And when I looked it up online, no one seemed to um, experiment with this strategy. But I'm not sure why you want to go into Mystic Mind format when we have Goat format and Edison format is on the rise of popularity. So let's get into it. And um, if you're wondering uh, about the sleeves here, they're actually Digimon sleeves, and we have uh, the Agumon lineup and the uh, Andromon for some reason. So, okay, maybe not all um, Agumon and uh, Greymon and stuff, but let's have a good look at the sleeves there. And um, I was grateful that my Yu Gi Oh cards do fit in there. And the sleeves are actually good material. They're not soft, but um, they uh, do pick up the grease from your hands. So, first up, we have a. Uh, one of the namesakes of a card, and I did order two copies online, except uh, they haven't arrived yet. So, um, yep, a playset of Trickstar Candina. Then we have a copy of Morphing Jar that is still limited, and do have uh, ways around this card to bring it up. For a uh, defense, we've got Battle Fader. It's basically, um, like what Karibo should have been, you know, because Karibo only reduces damage once, and Battle Fader can end an entire battle phase. Kind of funny to think that, that hand traps have been around since uh, the early days as uh, the original series. Now we got uh, the. F oh, I was about to say first mill card. It's actually a morphing jar, but no, we got a first mill spell card in the form of a card destruction. And this is unlimited, but it is super rare. And man, I love the older style of printings. I've talked about it many times before, but I cannot get enough of that. Look how shiny it is. Look how dark it is. The colorations on the old cards are so beautiful. Uh, one Day of Peace, which is also another way of stalling, and a card that can uh, help mill your, um, thin out your opponent's deck. <laughs> Same with a Contract with Don Thousand. This card has only received a single printing in Duelist Saga, hence uh, the Duelist Saga rarity, with that uh, lining of, um, I'm not sure how you describe that, the lines of the rarity, like you can see that, can't you, the three lines? And I wish we would see a Duelist Saga make a comeback, because why not, you know? They could do a lot more with a Duelist Saga. Not just the, the unique printing. Now we go to three copies of Potted Duality, because it's not like you're summoning Battle Fader on your turn. And um, regarding Trickstar Candina, I'm sure um, any Trickstar player would know this, it only activates on normal summon. So... It's a shame uh, you can't activate its effect to search when, um, yeah. <laughs> we have a uh, Necro Valley next up, because um, if you're playing a mill deck, then you got to have a way to shut down your opponent's strategy. And with... N no, wait, Necro Valley's not banned. Mystic Mine is banned. And for good reason. But Necro Valley makes for a good substitute, because if you're ditching your opponent's cards in their deck or their hand, then you need to find a way to shut them down. And Necro Valley is a pretty good card for that. Now, we have a present card. So, this is from uh, Invasion Vengeance in 2015, I believe. And it makes your opponent discard their entire hand and draw five cards. So, that is quite a bit of draw power. And when you have three of them, that's essentially 15 cards that's shorter from the deck. Not to mention their starting hand being five or six cards and well, just like that, you got um, half the deck sent to the graveyard. And you also have Trickstar Reincarnation. This is why the Candina is in here, because with Reincarnation, you banish your opponent's hand and they draw the same number of cards. So, with present card, having your opponent draw five cards, then it's essentially another copy. As long as uh, you get present card to go off first, then you use Trickstar Reincarnation, and so we got 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, and their starting hand, they're already down to like 5 cards. Now we got a trap trick because these cards are normal traps, 
And uh, I'm not sure how many copies of Trap Trick I should run, because you banish a copy from your deck, then you set a copy from your deck. So, that's a bit tricky. I did initially thought Trap Trick was um, a card that copies the effect of a card you banish, but maybe that would have been too good. So, um, if you want to run Trap Trick, you'll be sacrificing two copies of um, one of your mill cards. Very risky, a very risky card. And, um, oh, in the theme of um, trick or treat, are you tricking your opponent or are you giving them a treat? Because <laughs> uh, this deck can backfire uh, pretty spectacularly if you're not prepared. Now, this is why I have the Morphing Jar in here with Threatening Roar, because your opponents uh, cannot attack when you activate this card. And so, how do they get rid of a Morphing Jar? Well, I do have a few negates to um, counteract that. Um, Dark Rive can uh, take out your opponent's spells or traps, and then they draw a card. Uh, I probably don't need to say that, because Dark Rive was a very useful card back in the day. It actually appeared in GX, if you can believe it. It's that old. Recall is essentially a monster version of Dark Rive, which can negate monster effects and makes your opponent draw a card. So, more draw power for your opponent, while also defending yourself. And uh, it's a non once per turn card, much like Solemn Judgment. So all these counter traps, and maybe we could combine the uh, counter fairies with this strategy. There was like Harvest Angel uh, something. Um, I think it was a dark counterpart to that. Um, I can't remember what it was called, but yeah, maybe maybe should have looked into that. I literally just came up with it now. <laughs> yeah, maybe need to look into counter fairies if counter fairy can. Uh, use like a mill strategy. Now we have appropriate, and this is actually the errata version of the card, because before, you can activate this card when your opponent draws a card outside the draw phase, draw two cards from your deck. It's not particularly well worded, and so um, they, they kind of nerfed it with uh, this reprint from, uh, what set was that from? Mystical Fighters. You can probably hear an aeroplane outside. Or a helicopter, whatever. But, uh, with appropriate... <laughs> okay, that is very distracting. <laughs> but with, um, appropriate, the way it works is you activate it after your opponent draws a card, and then when they draw again, you draw two more cards. That's when it goes off. Now, thankfully, it's still not once per turn. There's no, uh only activate this once per turn, or you can only control one copy of Appropriate on your side of the field. So in a way, as long as you can get your opponent to keep drawing cards, then you're going to have a lot of cards yourself. So with uh, Trickstar Reincarnation, and Present Card, and um, Contract with Don Thousand, One Day of Peace, Card Destruction, all those draw cards, even Morphing Jar, you're going to have Appropriate going off like crazy, and then we have uh, this random card called Soul Levy, which is from Chaos Impact. And each time your opponent special summons a monster, which let's face it, they do a lot of that anyway these days. I don't know, what decks don't do that these days? So each time your opponent special summons a monster, send the top three cards from their deck to the graveyard. So it's kind of like the Skull Invitation of Mill Strategies, and I think it is very appropriate they have Soul Absorbing Bone Tower in the background. <laughs> I was about to say Backyard. <laughs> uh, thankfully I corrected myself. So, that's uh, the idea, only a handful of monsters, and now uh, it's uh, out of order, but that's okay. Other cards that you could include like, um, more draw power, except with, a uh, Pot of Extravagance, you're restricting yourself. And yes, there's Pot of Prosperity that's, uh, recently been reprinted in the Rarity Anniversary. Hey, why do I not include a Duel of Saga in that collection, Konami? I don't get it. I don't know what's up with, uh, Duel of Saga. It was a wonderful set, in my opinion. But I guess it didn't do much in the, uh, competitive environment, and maybe sales flopped? I don't know. I don't know how you determine um, Yu-Gi-Oh! sales, if they do well or poorly. I heard they did poorly with uh, Legendary Duelist 1 that kicked off a whole Legendary Duelist series, and then... Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how sales work for Yu-Gi-Oh! products, if they do well or poorly. But that is the uh, deck profile on Trickstar or Treat. 
And what do you think of this? Is this a good strategy? Is this something uh, people could experiment with during a Mystic Mind format? Since you're playing very, uh, very minimal amount of monsters. And the best one you have is a Candina to search for um, Trickstar Reincarnation. But, what did you think of it? And I'm not sure what I have installed for uh, deck profiles in the future, but it's relatively cheap. I'm not sure what the most expensive card in the set is. And if you can think of other ways to improve this deck, let me know in the comments. And until next time, take care, mates.